In this session, we will consider using the educative mentoring approach to support lesson planning. What do you understand by an educative mentoring approach? Pause the presentation and reflect for a few moments, maybe make some notes. And then when you're ready, uh, restart and we'll look at this together. Here are some of the ideas that I have. Um, educative mentoring approach is critical friendship, collaborative partnership, analyzing experience together, focused on pupil learning, moving from learn that, the content, to learn how to, putting it in practice. And the learning is actually cited in the doing of the different activities of teaching. So it's moving from an instructional to a transactional approach, from being judgmental to being developmental. It's not telling what works here by transmitting an established body of knowledge and skills, but it's modelling by thinking aloud how we learn from teaching so that they too can appreciate learning about their teaching in order to develop their autonomy as a professional. Research findings indicate that the activities of mentoring matter in the learning to teach process of student teachers. In particular, the way student teachers can focus their planning, teaching and reflection around pupil thinking and understanding. Certain mentoring activities, when done in educative ways, are particularly powerful for student teachers' growth. It is important to look closely at the way student teachers plan, teach and reflect. Here are some of the specific high leverage practices that help the mentee in learning specific aspects of practice and leading them towards a better understanding of teaching and learning. Today we are looking at co-planning because planning is an essential component of effective instruction in learning to teach. At a basic level, planning involves identifying what will be taught and how it will be taught with a focus on teacher performance. But at a complex level, planning, planning focuses on pupil learning and involves identifying what pupils will learn and how they will learn it and how they will demonstrate their learning. Most student teachers are unaware of the importance and complexities of planning because the work of planning was invisible to them as pupils. Student teachers need assistance to develop complex planning skills to provide instruction that promotes pupil learning. Mentors can provide this assistance through co-planning, the collaborative planning of instruction. When teaching mentees how to plan lessons, traditionally, mentors have shown mentees their plans described activities and provided feedback on a plan that a mentee has subsequently developed, which informs the mentee of what to do when. However, to help the mentee to also understand why and how to plan, educative mentors co-plan collaboratively with their mentees. So this is an activity to do together, i.e. joint work where mentees and mentors are collaborating on authentic teaching activities and they interrogate, explain and justify their practice together. They develop a more reciprocal and less hierarchical mentoring relationship, enabling them to learn from one another as co-learners. These activities have been seen to encourage professional discourse about teaching and learning. Thinking aloud is when mentors share their ideas about issues, how they interpret what children say and do, and making connections between different experiences. This helps your mentee to understand how a teacher with a more sophisticated cognitive map of teaching and learning perceives an event in the classroom. The mentor will share thoughts, questions and wanderings whilst co-planning and they will re make reflections on their own teaching visible. 
Exploring content, mentors probe the thinking of their mentees and encourage them to articulate the rationale for their practice. Focus on pupils' learning rather than on the teaching performance. And situated inquiry where different approaches to practice are trialled and a problem of practice is the focus of the talk between the mentor and the mentee. Questions are asked about practice and links made with theory, reinforcing the connections between learn that and learn how to. In the back of your mind will be the direction in which your mentee needs to develop. This is bifocal practice, attending to both the here and now, and the direction that the mentee's learning is going in. They will have a bifocal vision of learning teaching. So, a couple of questions for you to reflect on. How are you finding articulating your practice, sharing the rationale behind what you do? And do you and your mentee have a shared vision for the direction in which they need to develop? How do you know? How could you develop a shared vision of long-term goals? Listen to an educative mentoring conversation that we have modelled for you. Beforehand, um, before Julia, the mentee, arrived, I thought about what she needed to develop, her ability to consider the pupil's needs. So I am going to bring prior learning and individual pupils' needs into our discussion. The questions will stay on the screen for you to see what elements of an educative approach are happening. Hi, Julia. It's good to Hi, see you. you. I'm fine, thanks. Thank you. Good, good. Um, let's have a look at the next lesson that you're going to be observing when I'm teaching. Um, we're going to plan it together so that you can understand why I've chosen to teach it the way I have. Hi, Julia. It's good to Hi, see you. you. I'm fine, thanks. Thank you. Good, good. Um, let's have a look at the next lesson that you're going to be observing when I'm teaching. Um, we're going to plan it together so that you can understand why I've chosen to teach it the way I have. Okay. Lovely. And that's science tomorrow afternoon. Yes, that's right. Um, we're going to use your lesson planning form. Um, I expect you've got one available from your university forms. Yeah, brilliant. So my first thought here is, where have we got to in the last lesson? What do we need to cover in this lesson? And where does that fit in with the scheme for this half term? I wonder, have you got the scheme of work to hand? I have, I have. So last lesson, we were um, making some simple food chain diagrams using pictures from the book uh, and putting them in the right order and adding some arrows. The lesson that we're going to do this week, we were, um, as we discussed, we we're thinking about going to the school wildlife area and we're going to try and help them to build simple food chains based on what we see there. And then we're going to follow that with some lessons about habitats and what happens when habitats are destroyed. Great. OK, so next I would think about how that last lesson went. Um, were there any aspects that need revising, revisiting, really? So uh, how, do you how do you decide what actually needs revisiting? Well, I think about any individuals in the class who were struggling with some part of the lesson and which things were new to them uh, and which things we could review to strengthen their recall. Um, I look if anyone's missed the lesson as well, because they might need some additional support. And, and have you written that on your plan? Well, no, actually, at this stage, I wouldn't have written anything on my plan because I usually think through these steps without any notes. But it really would be a good idea for you to make some notes at first and they can go on the top of your plan so that you keep them in mind. And I don't mind if you write lots of stuff down at the moment, OK, because it's more important to capture it at this time. And 
after a while it'll become more automatic to you just like when you learn to drive okay yeah so the, so the last lesson jamie wasn't there mm -hmm. and there was one person that i noticed in the lesson cara she found the new vocabulary really difficult she was really not sure about the terms producer and predator and prey and she got in a real muddle um, and there were quite a few children that I noticed were putting the arrows the wrong way around on their food chain diagram. So I know some of them aren't quite there yet. Good, good. Well done noticing that. Um, so I'm going to plan a starter activity to revisit the new words that we learned last lesson. But I need it to be fun and engaging so that Cara isn't put off right at the beginning of the lesson. And uh, it can help set the pace for the lesson. We don't want it to drag. Yeah. So the learning objective on, on our scheme of work is to construct and interpret a variety of food chains, identifying producers, predators and prey. Mm. How do you feel about what we're going to cover? Are you familiar with these concepts? Actually, with these, because it's biology, I actually feel quite confident because I did A-level biology and I really enjoyed it. Um, so, you know, I feel quite confident and you know, I have been thinking about it. So I think my initial thoughts were um, maybe we could get the pupils to choose an animal they find in the wildlife area and perhaps to draw the habitat it lives in um, and then to construct the food chain. Mm, that's a promising idea. But there are a few things that we're going to need to consider. For example, how will they know what that creature eats? And how are they going to access that information in the wildlife area? Um, yes, I was sort of thinking they might already know some of that, but I think you're right. Some of them that's going to be quite difficult because we might find some some things that we're not familiar with. So. Um, would it be a good idea maybe to split the lesson? Could we do like some of the practical things in the wildlife area and then maybe do some research back in the classroom? Okay, that's good. Um, how would you want them to record the work? Do you want them to do a food chain in their books? Uh, so everybody's got their own one or do you want them to work in groups and make a posters for display? What, what do you think? Well, I think it would be really nice to have a display and we don't have to have something in their books all the time, do, do we? You know, I would quite like to do some kind of poster. OK, OK. Well, that will take much longer. And as it happens, we could spend longer tomorrow. Um, so if we decide posters, we've got to now decide, are they going to do one each or do we want them to work together in groups? And that brings in another question, and that's how will we assess their work? Because we need to know what each of them have learned, and that's much harder when it's in group work. So, um, so we need to decide if the post is going to be used for assessing their learning, or whether we maybe use a different way to assess their learning. We could do it orally at the end of the lesson. Um, so what do we want to know that the pupils can do by the end of the lesson? Well, if I think about the objective, I, I want to know that they can construct a food chain and that they can correctly label it using that vocabulary. And I also want to use this as an opportunity for them to start thinking about beyond a food chain um, into a food web so that, so that we can start thinking about habitats. Mm. OK, so how could we assess whether they have learnt that? I think you're right. I think that would be quite hard if they're doing that as a group poster. So maybe it would be useful for them to each record something and then I can use that to check they all understand the key terms. Um, but I wonder if there's a way to combine it, combine their, their posters to make some kind of display showing, mm -hmm. maybe showing the different food chains in the wildlife area. And then we could always refer back to that when we talk about habitats. Oh, that's a nice idea. Good. OK, so this is coming on nice. I'm looking forward to this lesson. Um, how will you, they know what a good poster looks like when it's finished? I think that's quite a helpful thing to consider. I think 
um, maybe I could mock up a little example um, and share something really simple. And actually, that would give me the opportunity to model using the arrows again, because, as I said, there were quite a lot of children that couldn't do that. And it means that I can go back through the key terms. Well done. Thank you. OK, I think that's really good, Julia. Um, and so um, I think this is a good place. So the goal during this phase is not for the student teacher to learn to imitate the mentor but to develop the student teacher's own adaptive expertise. How did the mentor help the student teacher to develop their practice? Pause and think if you want a bit of time. What do you notice about the language? Did you notice how it became more collaborative using us and we? So we have made the lesson plan a focus of inquiry here into teaching practices to help us deconstruct our practices so that the mentee can examine or question them. The mentee is an active participant in the learning process, while the mentor purposefully and intentionally shapes learning opportunities in the mentee's intellectual zone of proximal development. Notice the mentor thinks about what is important for the mentee to know, rather than just sitting down next to them and telling them what she would do and why. This has taken a little thought for preparing before the co-planning session. Here you can see a table that might help you think about how your mentoring conversations around co-planning a lesson um, may be changing as your mentee becomes more experienced. This table was created from research which involved video recording a mentor-mentee pair through a year. The mentor watched the videos and reflected on her practice. She noticed the kind of talk taking place. As the year progressed, the mentor released planning responsibility to the mentee in order to engage the mentee in learning to plan for instruction for themselves. Our suggestion is that that table might well be very useful for you to analyse your own practice and that you might like to identify another mentor, maybe even ask your professional mentor uh, who, who you want to work with or maybe a mentor in another school try out a co-planning session with your mentee using this educative approach and then whilst you are having the conversation maybe you could record it on your phone or write some notes afterwards and then share that with the mentor that you're paired up with after you have listened to the recording um, you could meet together with that uh, other mentor maybe a video call to compare notes about how you were able to enact the practice of educative mentoring and to talk about the things that you found hard and give each other ideas that will help you develop further. So um, if you want help in connecting up with another uh, mentor, please do contact um, me and my email address will be at the end of the slides. Another thing that might feel easier for you would be if you videoed or recorded the conversation and then you watched or listened to it back just yourself and spent some time making a note on your reflections using the table on the previous slide as a lens to help you look at your practice. These are the references from which this presentation has been produced. The information about how to uh, get a, a certificate for your educative mentoring practice is summarised here and there is more detail in your handbook. If you would like help connecting with a mentor from another school, please contact Liz 
and uh, she will try and find a connection for you. Thank you.